Today I'll be taking my 5v5 defensive tips video and showing you the offensive version on how to attack all of these rotations. Now two important tips you want to take note of before you even get into the rotations is that one, as you're coming up the court, you want to always try and like tap R1 or RB twice so that the first time you can see all the icons on the court and you want to mainly focus on where your small forward and your power forward is so you'll be able to see if either square is in the left corner or the right corner and if triangle is in the left or the right corner and then once you see the icons and where they're at that's where you click r1 or rb the second time so that you could cancel it out and then get into your dribble combos now for the second important tip as a guard, you want to make sure you know how to create an opening for yourself dribbling wise. So I'm not saying you have to know how to L2 cancel three, four times. I'm just saying whatever move that you have, whether it's just a crossover into behind the back that could get you open or if somebody's to the left of you and you simply just do one step forward and get an open like mid-range shot whatever you need to do to get yourself open dribbling wise, make sure that you can do that because any sort of passing won't matter if you're not a threat on the court. So you need to be able to put the ball in the basket so that people will start to help on you and you could start making these passes within the rotation. So if you need to practice your dribbling, you could go on your build and go into the art of shooting gym to practice your dribbling. Or if you haven't even made the build yet, you can go into my MBA and create the build that you're looking to make and practice the dribbling there. So the way you wanna do that is first, you wanna go to my MBA, you're going to create your own my MBA file. And once you've created the file and load it in, you want to go down to options and then create player here. You want to go to add new player. And then from here, you could change everything from the height, the weight. You could also go to signature and you could go all the way over to ball handling and you could put whatever dribble style and stuff that you want to put on. But one thing you want to remember to do is say, for example, if you want Kyrie Irving dribble style to pop up, you have to go into attributes and then go give him the 90 speed with ball so that you can go and put that animation on. Now, once you're finished creating this player, you want to make sure before you click complete, you want to go to export player DNA and go to add new player. And this is basically going to save it to your system. You could either save the player DNA to your system or you could do that and share it online so that anybody else that wants to download it can download it once you do that you could hit complete and even if you make a new my mba file you'll always have this player and your player dna that you could transport to like any other file once you do this you could go to the player that you've just created and go to copy the team and copy them onto the team that you're on if the game says your team has too much players on your team you could either go just to somebody at the bottom you could either release them to the free agency or you could just edit the player go to import player dna or to load slash download nba player dna and then you want to scroll over to my files and click the one that you just exported when you were making the player and then you want to click import appearance and attributes and like that you have the same player on the team once you do that you want to go to coaching coach game plan all teams and then you want to scroll it down and make sure that the player is not in reserve you want to put him into the starting lineup or wherever and make sure that he has minutes so that he pops up when you're in the game or when you're in the practice facility and now from here you want to go to coaching practice freestyle and now you should be in the practice gym with a creative player that you've just made so the first thing i'm going to be showing you guys is a play call that we do which is called cross and you're going to need this for these rotations and basically cross is an alternative to wrapping which is this right here where you tell your shooting guard rap and he wraps around now the problem that you run into sometimes with running a rap is that you run the risk of being double teamed by the lock and the shooting guard and you could possibly make the pass to, the, to your shooting guard as well. But the thing is, your shooting guard is not going to be a scoring threat from all the way out here as he's trying to wrap to the three point line. So what I like to do is I'll just call a cross and simply my shooting guard will just run across straight to the spot instead of going all the way around. The advantage to this is that you still make the lock and the shooting guard have to communicate with each other because you might run into a situation where the shooting guards going over here and then the their shooting guard the defensive shooting guard will try and play aside and make the lock switch and they might not communicate on that so they both might end up guarding you but now at this point your shooting guard is closer to the three-point line and now the power forward has to decide am i stepping to the shooting guard and if he does step to the shooting guard the center has a wide open slip right here now in this possession my teammate cody explains to me that on the cross 
he basically calls out that the corners are starting to lift up or the slip gets open so right here i call out the cross so once you see keys is gonna run to the right and once he runs to the right i try to dot a corner but the corner isn't open but something that i explained with the cross that does get open you see how this other um defender he's out of the play because he was trying to double team me so now the big has to make a decision so he tries to like step at Keese right here at the shooting guard. And basically when he does that, it frees up the slip for the center right here. Another advantage with Cole and Cross is that in a full court setting, the point guard and the shooting guard might have miscommunication on what side of the court the point guard wants to come up on. So instead of saying, Yo, I'm going left or you go right, you go left, you could just simply let the shooting guard go wherever. And if you need him to go to the other side, just call out a cross. So like right here, I could just call cross and then I'll simply dribble the ball over here away from the double team. And then the shooting guard will just go straight across to the other side. Now, the last advantage with crossing is that as a point guard, you'll realize that you have the advantage of picking what defenses the other team can run. So you could see the point guards on the left side, which means that the other team can only run triangle or reverse right now. But if you call a cross, once you go across the court, you'll realize that the other team can now only run stack or reverse stack. So you could use that to your advantage. So you could choose for the other team, the only rotations that they can run and use that to your own advantage. So now I'm going to show you how to be a triangle and a reverse. If you guys don't know what those are, you could go check out my last 5v5 defensive tips video so you could understand what the rotation is. But this is it right here. So the most important thing for me to explain, and this applies to every rotation i'm gonna show to you including stack and reverse stack what you have to realize about all of these rotations is that they're all focused on playing sides defense so as you can see on the rotation on the slip you know the power forward is going to watch the left and the the small forward which is the lock is going to watch the right so since they're playing sides on you that means neither defender is playing you straight up which means that the middle of the rotation is always open for yourself so this is why i had said in the beginning of the video it's important to have dribbling moves that could get yourself open what you want to try and do is to maintain this middle but even the rotation hasn't fully happened yet so you don't have to worry about that too much but understand that the middle of this rotation in between the power forward and the small forward is the open space so now once the slip happens you guys know that the power forward is going to drop to the corner. The thing about sides that you have to understand is that no matter what, if it's triangle, reverse, stack, once the rotation happens, the small forward or the person that's coming back to you is always playing catch up. No matter what, automatically, this person has to play catch up with you. He has to try and get in front of you. So because of that, you will always have a first step advantage because you know he has to fight to get in front of you or else you're going to be open. So since you have this first step advantage over the defender, it is your job as a point guard to attack the middle, which will go into the next tip that I'll give is that you cannot be scared of the middle or the open space. You have to make yourself a threat when it comes to attacking the middle of the rotation, because if they fully run this rotation, and the power forward drops this is basically like no man's land for the lock or the small forward it's your job to use that one step advantage you have to get in front of him either if you have to drive down and dunk on somebody shoot a floater a mid-range or try and dribble and crab him whatever move you need to do to be able to score in the middle of the rotation is what you have to do to basically help your team out on any triangle stack reverse rotation all of that all right so we're going to take this clip here from the 5v5 defensive tips video and i want you guys to see right here he's gonna miss the shot but the idea or what he was trying to do is how you attack a triangle or reverse as you can see right here they call out the reverse 
and the power forward steps up at him but again like i was saying somebody in the rotation always has to play catch up he does a behind the back to like get himself open and he shoots a shot if this power forward doesn't jump he wouldn't have got a contest but regardless or not say it was a different mover he was like just able to get further out over here it would be wide open because as you can see there is a lot of open space in between the corner rotation and the power forward going up on the reverse also since you know that you have the first step advantage and you know that this defender is gonna chase you you could use the fact that he's chasing you to your advantage so once he tries to step directly in front of you you can hit a crossover that's gonna leave him completely in the dust so once you beat him to his side you have this whole middle to work with say for example if the shooting guard does end up helping off of this this is a much easier read to make because this is a lot of space he has to cover so he either has to leave you wide open or leave this pass right here wide open so now if you make yourself a threat in the middle basically what you do now is is you're gonna force at least one person in this whole rotation to make a decision and once you do that it becomes a domino effect because once one person does something the rest of the rotation either has to adjust to that or leave something wide open so right here say you're working in the middle you done scored once or twice in the triangle this power forward might start thinking uh i know i have to drop at the rotation because the slip is happening but he might second guess himself and stay with you once that happens now the sender is gonna have to think yo do i continue to hold down the corner or do i drop down at the slip so basically at this point you leave the game up to their communication and what they're okay with because remember at the end of the day it's three of them having to be in sync with the offense so they have to talk a lot and just have intangibles and certain things that they just know how to do and have it on the fly and that comes with team chemistry so if this power forward tries to like play your middle and try to keep you away from trying to shoot something for too long now the center is left two on one to decide whether he's gonna catch the slip or stay in the corner if he goes at the slip you have a corner pass right there so you can see right here on this possession i have sharp takeover and you can see this is the person guarding me right here and peep right here how he's guarding the side of me he's not guarding me straight up now i don't know if they call it triangle or that's just how their rotation ended up being but you can see he's not guarding me straight up so i do a pullback and it gives me like the middle of their rotation and from here now this person is forced to make a decision on whether he's gonna go to the corner or he's gonna continue to play my shot so you could see he jumps at it and now because i forced him to make a decision this person right here is forced to adjust to that so he either has to drop it to slip or he has to go play the corner shot right here and right here i don't throw the pass immediately because he has on mamba and i don't know whether or not he's gonna reach and try and go for a steal so what i do is is i do a behind the back and this right here shows exactly what i was talking about since he was since he's automatically gonna be a step behind me and he has to try and get in front of me which he tries to do i hit an extra move and it takes him completely out the play so now i have this whole side to work with by myself so now it's either going to be a wide open shot or a wide open pass to my shooting guard because this person right here has to commit to something there's no way he can guard the both of us because there's too much space so here i fake the shot because i know he's going to sell out at the shot and i get a wide open pass the keys and he hits a three now another thing that you can do to help you beat a reverse or a triangle is if you're able if they're like showing the rotation too early and you're able to predict they're about to run it you should try and position yourself like over here by like the top of the key to the wing area if you're deep wing you make it a lot easier for the power forward to play the corner and to play you but when you're all the way out like over here on the slip this power forward has to run all the way from the wing all the way down to the corner so we're going to take everything i just explained for reverse and triangle and put it into stack and the three guard press i'm basically going to put them in the same section because a three guard the press is kind of the same thing as a stack is just extended out more so again all of these defenses focus on like guarding the side of a ball handler 
they're not focused on guarding you straight up which means like at certain points you're gonna have the middle of like i guess the double team you can say because they're guarding your side so you might have the opportunity to like split it but this is not even the first option that i want to get into but notice that once the slip happens this is when this person the power forward should be releasing and again like i explained before this means that the lockdown will always have to play catch up with you no matter what since the, they're both playing sides and when the power forward releases the lockdown has to catch up with you in order to get in front of your player because he's to the side of you which means that you as a ball handler you automatically will always have the first step advantage against the person that has to recover so once this release and this rotation happens it is up to you or your guard to not be afraid of the middle and to make yourself a threat in the middle because right here is going to be the open space like how i was saying all these rotations are side heavy they only really guard the baseline and the perimeter so the middle of the floor is usually wide open this is why i was also saying too you need to have whatever moves work for you i don't care if you got l2 cancel if you dribble drive only have two combos whatever moves work for you to allow you to execute like in the mid range of the three point line or just to get yourself open use that to make yourself a threat when you come down here take your midi shot if you can't shoot mid ranges shoot floaters if you can't shoot floaters dunk on them but you have to do something in this area to create for yourself or even you can create at the three point line but do whatever you need to do as a point guard in order to make yourself a threat once you start doing this and making yourself a threat and now you're going to create a lag in their defense because now the power forward is not going to release his early he might be like oh let me just stay here a little bit longer so that i can't score in this area so as the slip is happening since you force the power forward to make a decision which is to stay with you to prevent you from shooting it affects the whole rotation now now the center has to decide am i just going to stay in the corner so they don't get a three or a corner dot or am i going to drop over to the center if he does drop over to the center it leaves this open and now it forces the shooting guard to make a decision am i going to hug the wing defender am i going to play two or am i just going to go straight down to the power forward so now this is the same thing i was explaining before how the lock had to play catch up before now it's one of the rotational guys that have to play catch up so you can see right here the shooting guard has to play two and the power forward is gonna have to catch up all the way over here and this is where making yourself a threat is the most important thing because it'll create that delay in the rotation to make your passes a lot more easier to make so now to go into the in-game footage you're gonna see right here they're basically in a three guard press but this is the main issue with running those rotations like triangle reverse stack too many times it starts to become obvious and it, it'll be too easy to read so you're gonna see right here i'm basically just trying to maintain the middle you could see i'm literally playing in between the two of these guys right here and i'm waiting for the slip to happen once the slip happens i'm not doing too much i'm gonna go straight right past them they run their rotation but he can't get in front of me so it's a wide open floater every time i'm gonna play it back in full speed again so you guys could see i just maintain the middle make myself a threat go there and get a wide open floater so now here's another possession you're gonna see i continue to do the same exact thing make myself a threat in the middle you're gonna see i get a dot to the wing and i'm able to get an open shot for my teammate and the reason why this is able to happen is because i've already made myself a threat in the middle so this guy right here that's gonna have to eventually release i'm forcing him to make a decision are you going to play my middle or are you going to run out over here he goes for he decides to go for a reach and at that same time i throw the pass to the wing and right here it's a wide open three and another thing too is since i force him to make a decision it forces him and him to also make a decision because you see right here he begins to run at the slip that's about to come from the left side because if he doesn't go early this could be a, like a wide open dunk because he's all the way on the left side of the rim so once he makes that decision this person here has to adjust he has to decide am i going to commit here to the corner or just try and play two so 
since I've created this lag in a defense, this pass right here is a lot easier for me to make. And I make the pass and he's able to get a wide open shot. I'm gonna show this possession too. And this is just basically to emphasize the point I'm making. Do not be scared of the middle. Don't be scared of that shit. Now, let me break it down for you guys. Why in the world would I shoot that? Well, like how I was saying before, again, nobody's actually playing you straight up. They're only playing the side of me. As you can see, he's not playing for a contest. He's playing to my left side and he's playing to my right side. You can see he's running to the side of my hand so that maybe he could go for a reach or something. But you can see he's never actually like guarding me face up and I see it. So right here I shoot, he tried to reach, no, sorry. And I get a wide open three ball. But even right here in my mind, I'm looking and I'm thinking like, I'm just trying to see what he's going to do. I see right here, he just steps a little and steps back. So I'm like, he's not really going to go for a contest. He just wants me to throw a pass over here. So I know if I can get him a little bit more to my side, I'm going to have a wide open shot in the middle. So you're going to see right here behind the back, pull back, and I shoot right through the middle of their double team. The reason why you can't be scared of the middle is because if you become scared of the middle and don't try to attack that, you're just going to end up doing what they want you to do. Most people that run stack, triangle, reverse, and all of these rotations, they want you to dribble side to side around the screen because that's what they're guarding so they're gonna be able to get a lot more blitzes and plucks on you so you have to do the exact thing that they don't want you to do and attack the weaknesses of that also let's say for example like say i was like over here and the double team was over here and it's a lot harder for me to make the right pass between these two what you could do is is when you have the opportunity to try and make a safe pass to the shooting guard and then allow the shooting guard to like make a decision whether or not it's to like fake pass and then shoot a shot drive and go for a floater or a mid-range or if he fully steps to this shot dot the corner sometimes as a point guard it's okay to pass the ball up to someone else to make a decision because sometimes the team's defense could be focused a lot more on you which can open up playmaking and scoring abilities for like your other teammates now I almost forgot to mention with stack as far as the positioning goes you want to try and set up like your screen and roll or your offense as far away from the opposite wing as possible so that you make it harder for the power forward to rotate over here unlike in triangle you have to be closer to the top of the key you want to try and be farther from the top of the key also another important thing when trying to beat a stack or a triangle is your communication and your chemistry with your big man if you guys could both or one of you guys can see a stack or a triangle is coming be sure to communicate that to the other person so that the center can know like it's time to slip because if the center just sits there holding the screen it makes the defenses double team that much stronger because the center will not be that much of a threat because they're just playing sides and trying to trap the point guard. So it's very important that the center is slipping and getting out of there when he needs to. Now to go in depth with three guard press, one thing you could do is you could run across to basically make it a lot harder for them to run a double team. Cause when you run across, they have to cover a lot more space on the court so once you blow by the first person which will probably be the shooting guard he's kind of out of the play and he can't double team again because the center is continuing to slip down the middle that's another important thing too when you see people are trying to press you just tell your center to keep going down don't have him try to set a screen because this allows them to continue double teaming you so by you crossing you're basically gonna kind of force the shooting guard or whoever it is to release out the to release from the double team and to go back to the person they're supposed to be guarding and then another thing with the crosses is, is that it's like dependent on the side like they're on so Right here, I have the shooting guard, but you might have a situation where the lock is here and the shooting guard is over here. So then when you're going up the court, it might be a situation where instead of the locks guarding you, you have the shooting guard guarding you. So now at this point, this may or may not be a mismatch depending on what build the shooting guard has. And from there, you can try and create something on the offensive side because you have a easier matchup to try and exploit so now to go into the in-game footage you can see right here they're in there like three guard press basically he kind of wants to double me but he's kind of waiting it out he's waiting for me to like 
push myself towards the sideline to really trap me he's trying to catch me in the trap zones like over here towards the sideline and by the half court line so as a point guard it's important to really manage the space that you have in the full court you have the most space on the court when you're bringing the ball up so what i do is is i go left i come back right and i call the cross again he's waiting to try and double me but since i'm managing the space right he can't do it and once you call the cross they, it, they basically have to disengage the whole double team because if he tries to something's going to get completely wide open because he's running to the open spot here and my big man's already down the court so it'll be an easy pass for him and even so i'm still able to find a quick dot right here and the reason why i got that dot right there is because as i'm bringing the ball up the court since he's crossing and it looks like i have open space to shoot the big man that was in a corner that's dropping to the slip he kind of sees it so he kind of steps at it a little bit but he's not able to guard the slip anymore right there because he's all the all the way towards the left side so you can see i get an easy dot and he's able to get a bucket and for red you wanted to do the same thing you want to try and run across because when you run across, it makes it so that they can no longer run like a stack rotation off of it. It forces the power forward to play the opposite side so he can't rotate down into the corner. The only thing they could do at this point is try and run a triangle and have the center run from the corner to the slip. But then you might have a situation where the lock has to drop in the corner and you might have a mismatch where you get to exploit the shooting guard all of this just scales back to what i was talking about with the triangle defense and how you score on it especially since you're in a full court setting it's going to be a lot harder for you for like them to do the triangle and for the shooting guard to be able to catch up and get in front of you so the middle of the court is going to be a lot more open and free for the point guard to attack and try and get a bucket or a pass from it and now when dealing with a three guard press a second option that you can use is you can have your second ball handler come up and bring the ball up because when he comes up to bring the ball up the double team is not focused on him so he has a lot more open floor he can work with he might even like pass by this person and be able to create something for himself in the open floor but let's say he doesn't create anything but he's able to bring the ball up the court now the, like the double team has to catch up and get back into the defense so depending on what team it is some people might rotate this different ways from other people but you could see right here either they could like do a triangle side thing right here where the point guard will drop to this corner the center will pick up and then the shooting guard will recover to the ball handler or they could run a stack side rotation where the power forward will drop to the slip the lock will drop to the corner and the shooting guard will go to the point guard now the thing about this that makes it hard for the defense is that regardless of what rotation they're doing they have to communicate amongst like three to four different people to under to like be able to even stop this because now we're basically on a fast break because we've beaten their double team so if their communication is not on point they might end up leaving something open because say for example the corners don't know who's dropping at the slip they both might have a situation where they both drop at the slip and now both corners are open or neither one of them drop the slip or kind of like don't know who's supposed to rotate and they just end up leaving the slip completely open so the main thing you really want to do is you want to throw different options and do different things that forces the defense to communicate with each other because things like crossing and having somebody else handle the ball and like giving them a different side of your offense forces the other team to make decisions and to communicate amongst one another because if they don't communicate they can't run these rotations and for the second option that i was talking about when it comes to the three guard press again you don't have to get the ball too you could see they want to double team me and trap me right here they both shade to my side so he passes it off to my shooting guard keys he brings the ball up and now look they can't double team they cannot double team because it's too much space to cover and right here i let him work out easy floater 
So as a guard, it's important too when you're being doubled to allow other people on the court to make decisions as well. Because if you're being double teamed and the focus is on you, you open up the whole floor for your other teammates. Let me know in the comment section if you guys would like to see like the full footage of this gameplay with like a mixture of the party chat plus me breaking down certain parts of the game and putting in my own commentary into it let me know in the comment section but if you're bored with nba 2k24 and you want to try some new dribble moves check out this video on the screen and i'll holla at y'all in the next video